At the Jim Mountain Sapphire Mine, customers pay for a bucket of gravel to try their luck finding rough cut sapphires. One of our hobbies um, is to make jewelry. Travis and his family came from Seattle. They found one good sized stone and 20 some smaller ones that can be turned into jewelry. And we sent them off to have them cut. Priests and brothers of the Congregation of Mary Immaculate Queen in Seattle have been on a mission. What we wanted to do is get the sapphires to put in a crown for a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The men got quite a haul for that crowning touch. And that's what Jim Mountain's all about, is it's a treasure hunt. Chris Cooney owns and operates the mine with his family. And I'm now working with my third generation. I've got grandkids that are washing gravel and helping us out here. Some people who find stones deemed appropriate for a setting keep the stones in their natural state. But a special electric furnace is used to heat treat others. We're utilizing high temperatures, you're able to finish the chemical reaction within the stone to darken the color. That process brings out a more dazzling stone. It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes a customer will hit the mother load. In 2016, the gentleman found a stone that is a spectacular cushion cut blue that back in 2016 we valued at $16,000. Chris has a degree in mining Montana engineering from Montana Tech in Butte. The mine began as a commercial mining operation in 1890. Up until the 1930s, uh, those mining operations were focused on the small stones that we're usually throwing away here. They were shipped all the way to Switzerland, used as watch bearings. That's right, watch bearings for Swiss watches. When miners found larger sapphires with natural color, those stones were cut as gemstones. All of the world fairs and exhibitions had a collection of multicolored Montana sapphires. Chris and his crew mine their own gravel at the mine site a few miles up the mountain. They get a lot of snow up here, so it's only open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. But the mine supplies gravel year round in its historic building in Phillipsburg. The first independent Ford dealership in the state of Montana. Today, we've evolved and use it for washing sapphire gravel year round. The Vang family were having a great time washing and combing through gravel to find all kinds of surprises. Lisa Lands is a stone evaluator. I look at sapphires and I find flaws. We will look at your larger stones. We will evaluate those to determine if they're gem quality. Ann and Ron Gissel have been coming to the mountain in search of sapphires for 19 years. Ann's having several nice stones cut into a ring, earrings, and a pendant. And they're beautiful. Um, I'm still waiting to find the big one. <laughs> the brothers and priests from Seattle were successful in their mission to find gemstones, but it isn't just that. No, there's just a beautiful tranquility here. It's a bit off the beaten path. We are the end of the pavement, the end of the power line, the end of the phone line here. From Hamilton, you head east over Scalcaho Pass. It can be slow going, but the highlight is Scalcaho Falls a precursor to Gem Mountain. The mine isn't exactly remote from Phillipsburg, but you can't be in too much of a hurry. Once in a while on the drive out, you just got to take your foot off the gas, you got to slow down. The mountain, he says, is magical. Kevin Mackey, NBC, Montana.